right, hey everybody. Uh, it's way after Christmas, but I still got the Christmas stuff up. So we're in the next video, which is all about your profile and getting you set up and getting started on Upwork. So after you've created your account, I believe you'll have to do a bunch of identity verification stuff, and then you'll get in making your actual profile. So Upwork has like gamified this a little, which is great because that's how you want to approach this. I've said that a couple times and I'll keep saying it, approaching this like a game. The goal here is to get 100% on your little portfolio thing. We'll see that a little later when we switch over to looking on the computer. Uh, you want to do 100%. You know, it's uncomfortable sometimes to have to make a video, for instance, for your portfolio. And maybe no one will ever look at it, uh, especially if you're not in a field that, you know, is visual or whatever. And it's just you talking like this. But it helps you get that 100% and that's valuable. So when we get to looking at the client side section of Upwork, we're going to see how little of your portfolio or your profile a client sees when they're looking at proposals, okay? So it's very little at the start, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't put the proper work into it. However, it does mean there's certain things that you should focus on the most, and that's going to be mainly the title. So in your title, you really want to describe what you're doing. You don't want to just put your name. You want to put some keywords that describe what you're doing. We'll look at that a bit more. In general, your portfolio should be pretty short and sweet. Lots of examples, lots of links. Uh, lists are very helpful. You don't want to give big, long paragraphs because nobody's going to really read them. Uh, they're going to be paragraphs, make them really short. I'm not a big fan of having tons and tons of icons. Some of the ones I show you will have some icons, but a little bit here and there is nice to visually break things up. As I said, go through and fill out everything. Fill in the portfolio, uh, put a bunch of examples. Very rarely are clients actually going to go and look at in detail at all of these, but I believe it will help the Upwork algorithm. You know, Upwork has their own internal systems for deciding who's coming up first when you're giving a proposal. So I don't think it's going to hurt you to have 100% profile completion. Finally, there's things like the doing the tests on Upwork. Uh, I don't think they're really important, but throw do a couple of them that are going to be relatively easy. Don't make a huge deal out of them, but it doesn't hurt if you do a couple of them. And add lots of examples of your work. That's really what's going to ultimately be the most important when it comes to proposals or clients looking at your work. So now that we've talked just generally about some uh, principles with profiles, let's jump in and actually look at some. All right, so we're over here at the computer. So now, of course, you should be aware the profile is your first major thing you're doing. So you might as well start off on the right foot and really go through and try to do the best job you can. It might take you a few days to do it. Don't necessarily try to do the whole profile in one day. It's much better for you to do a little bit every day and just do it with some quality and thought. So let's look at mine. And um, it's not changed enormously over the years. It's important and nice to have a good profile picture. Uh, I have a couple of these little badges, but those you won't have when you start off. And then Upwork has these different sections that you can create uh, where you give different titles to things that uh, have different hourly rates. So you can see here this title. Now, this is very important because when we look at um, the client side, this is really what clients are going to see first. That and then along with some of the words of your, your proposal. So having as much as you can in here is really, really valuable. You want to illustrate your main skills, right? So I have mapping, JavaScript, React Native, WordPress. These are quite distinct skills. I didn't put like JavaScript, jQuery, front-end, CSS. You know, if, if those were my specialties, maybe that's what I would put. But these are fairly distinct. This speaks to mobile development. WordPress is a completely different beast than JavaScript. And mapping is a, is a very niche specialization. So I put my strongest niche at the first, at the first one. And then JavaScript, I find, implies a lot of types of web development in general. This talks a lot about mobile, and this talks a lot about specialized WordPress stuff. So with this, I capture a lot of what I actually do. Now, it might seem like we're spending a lot of time just talking about this little thing here, but I think this is the most important thing in your profile, honestly. It's what clients see first. It's what is going to help you show up in different algorithms when people search. Uh, so it's really important to pick some words and pick a little divider that you like to use. You will see something like this in some of the other ones we look at, okay? Now, in the body of it, I really find that lists are nice. A little bit of a greeting, that's fine. And then just list out the same skills that you had up top. 
And I find putting a little bit more detail on each of them is really nice. Just some of the specific things that might stand out. Uh, Ajax, that's a little bit old school, um, so obviously it hasn't been updated a bit. But this is not bad. I would update, I would improve this even more if I was still working on this a lot by having little examples next to them, maybe little links or something like that. Um, some past experience already clients are just going to kind of read this. Uh, this doesn't really stand out perfectly great. I think this could be a little better, a little shorter, and a couple personal lines just to give a little bit of personal feel to it. That's nice. Uh, you want to fill in whatever education you happen to have. Uh, your work your work history on Upwork will show up automatically, and I have a lot here where no feedback is given just because some of these clients just haven't given the feedback. But early on, it's really important that you make sure clients do. Obviously, I have many pages, and earlier on, I always asked specifically that people made sure to leave reviews. So that's really important to do. Once you have it, it's not quite such a big deal, although it's probably best if I was continuing to follow up with that. Now in the portfolio, this is all pretty basic, but you just take some quick screenshots. Again, I don't think people really, I know that when I'm hiring, I didn't look really heavily in detail at this. The interface is a little bit crappy, for, and but tag the hell out of it, you know, add a few of these examples. It's certainly not going to hurt and it helps with all the algorithm bit of things. So, you know, this really is a nice thing. Add, add four or five examples. Um, to this and spend the time. Maybe that takes one of your, you know, maybe it takes a couple hours to do that, but it's worth it. Employment history. Again, I don't know how much people are going to look at this. I certainly don't look at it a great deal. I'm When a client is looking for you, they're much more looking for like, what do you do now rather than where have you worked? If where you worked is somewhere really prestigious, you should put it right up in the top here. No one's really going to scroll down and get all the way down here to look at it. This is more to just fill out your portfolio, uh, sorry, your profile for Upwork, in my, in my opinion. Um, then I do have a video here. It might be broken now. I'm not sure why it's not showing there, but I do have a video. That was something I did a long time ago that uh, I'm still, like, I haven't ever updated. But it was, again, I don't think people are really looking at it. Uh, I never got anybody who commented on it. Okay, so I think my, portfolio, my profile is okay. It could have some improvements, as I said. But let's look at some other ones from people either that I've hired uh, or that who I just think their portfolio uh, profiles are quite good. So here's one person. Again, you can see they do something similar in the title. They put uh, their main skills separated by this horizontal or this vertical bar. And they've found that those are the things that people are looking for when they tend to hire them. You can see that they have their uh, this short... Um, oh, sorry. No, it's not so... So you can see here, they have a little bit of personal stuff here up at the top and just really pointing out, I'm great, I'm great. I'm also Mensa, which is kind of the special thing that I'm a Mr. Smart guy. And then uh, from there, there's some lists. Again, when I was hiring this person, I didn't really go that far into looking at all this. I was going mainly to what's their work history? You know, do they have good reviews? What are some, how big are the jobs? You know, here's some quite large jobs that this person's worked on that says a lot. Maybe I go a little bit to their portfolio, but I'm not really, I never scroll down here. You know, this, by this point, it wasn't too important. Just looking at, okay, they have a lot of earnings, they have a good job success, and they're clearly smart, and they have some uh, details is enough to talk to them. Okay, so that's another good one. Here's another person, again, doing the same kind of thing, listing a bunch of skills uh, in the, in the, in the um, details, we have a bunch of lists with little icons. Again, the icons are not a bad idea. Going into the work history, this is where the good stuff is. Again, you're not gonna have that to start, so you're just gonna have to build that over time, but we will build that, so don't worry, we'll get there. Again, here's the portfolio, listing a bunch of skills. When it comes to listing your skills, just go crazy. Just put everything that even is slightly related to what you do. It's definitely not gonna hurt. Now, this person doesn't have the 100% job success or the various um, lists, but it's kind of okay if they're doing what I need and it's cheap enough, it can uh, be just fine as long as I look and, and they seem good in how they communicate as well. And here's the last good one that we're going to look at. Again, a person who lists things like this, has some good badges, uh, a little bit of uh, friendly uh, communication up there, and then just lists of what they do. And I think this is great. They just have that, some very simple 
okay, lots of work they've done. And in this case, this is a visual artist, so the portfolio is a bit more important and we want to look at this. Oh, this is interesting what they did. Um, <laughs> and just some different types of pages and stuff like that. So this is great. I think these portfolios are quite good and what you should sort of strive for. It's You're really looking for simplicity, but something that's strong. So let's look at some that I think are not so good, okay? So these uh, are going to range from like ones that I think are just like totally no effort over to ones that are pretty good but could be better, okay? So here's one that um, this person doesn't have any jobs, so that's obviously a major loss, but they should have put more time into this. They did list a couple skills here, but they probably could have put more. More specifically, what did they actually do? And this is way too small. This isn't, I don't have any sense of this person. I feel like this person just spent 10 minutes on this and there's nothing more. So maybe I would hire them. I don't know what would drive me to hire them. If they were new, they should have something like, I'm new to Upwork uh, and I'm really looking for a first job and I'll work really hard for you. Here's a list of my skills. It should be looking as good as those other portfolios, just they don't have the experience, right? There's no no job history, there's no nothing else. So this, I just think, it's no wonder that this person hasn't got work. No no, um, like harm to these people. I am just really want to look at this. So here's another one. We're going to have something like this. Now, this might be something I don't understand what this is, but this does look like their name uh, rather than any skill that they actually have. Uh, and then again, here's a very, very short description that is sweet. You know, it's very sweet but there's nothing to it that really makes me want to hire this person. They could go through and, and spend a couple hours on this, write down some bullet points, copy what they see in some other portfolios, and they might have a much better shot when they apply to some jobs. Now here's someone who has a much more together portfolio uh, profile, but I still think could be quite a bit stronger, okay? So they have good badges and everything, so I'm sure they've got, it looks like they've got hired for plenty of jobs. So this isn't to say, oh, this is terrible and this would never work. But I think this could be more descriptive rather than senior mobile app developer and game developer. We could put a couple specific skills in there. Um, this is okay, but I'm usually when someone's looking you up, they're looking for some specific technology and it helps a little. Um, maybe not just putting both of these very general things. Uh, I find these lists to be a little too repetitive. They're hard to read. Now, it does work in the sense that it gives me the sense that, oh, this person knows a ton of stuff, but it feels almost generic or like, like copy-pasted, like it's not really personal to the sense of like, I really get a sense of what they are specialized in. Now, they are working uh, with a company, so that might be partly why. In this case, as a game developer, it's really good that they have a video, so that's good. And then there's a bunch of, you know, good, good um, portfolio examples and a bunch of project catalogs, which is great, employment history. So overall, it's good. I'd give it, you know, like a six or seven out of 10. Uh, but I think this could be quite a lot better. And I think this title could be improved. Here's another one that's, that's pretty good. Now, the job success one really crushes this and makes it really uh, difficult. If someone has 68% job success, that's going to be a problem. So we're going to really focus on making this job success number high when we get started. And that's going to be all about how you're going to handle your first jobs so that once this gets to 100% out of the gate, you're off and running. And from there, you're going to just be able to pick up higher and higher quality jobs. Because once it's down this low, uh, it's tough. It's tough to come back from that. It's not impossible, but it's tough. Now, in terms of the actual portfolio, uh, this, I just don't understand. Uh, I think it's, you know, kind of a nice thing to say, but this could just say Ruby. Really, it could just say Ruby or maybe Ruby on Rails and probably a couple other things. So what else? If we look actually in detail, I think these are too long. It's a bit like my profile where these are a bit long, but they could probably put TDD, AWS, you know, Ruby, and something else from in here, uh, you know, fusion, whatever. And those would just be better to have four skills in there than this, because then you get, you show up in a lot more job um, searches that people are gonna do. Uh, and something a little bit personal in here might be kind of nice. This is okay, that's me, it's, there's a little bit nice there. But again, this feels a bit boilerplate. It's not the end of the world, it's pretty good. 
but a little bit of something that's a little personal might be nice in there. Um, some of these, you know, the actual details of this person's stuff is quite good, but it doesn't show up enough in the profile. Obviously, they've still done well. So again, this isn't one to say, oh, it's the end of the world. This is a terrible profile. I mean, these ones are bad, right? Like they've never got jobs, but this, this works well. But I just want to point out how to do it better than even people who are successful. Now let's come back and I need to just switch over to my freelancer side of things so we can actually take a look at editing the profile. So you can see I've got my 100% completeness going on, okay? Now there's some stuff, this is kind of like your homepage when you come in to Upwork. There's some stuff that's not necessarily like profile related that you'll want to set. So you'll want to make sure that you've set these different availability uh, things and visibility, uh, why not make it public? There's things like job preferences. What early on, you just want to open it up to everything because you're just trying to get started. Now, if we hop into this profile completeness thing, you can see I haven't done the certifications or other experiences, but it still marks me as 100% completed. Now, go for the 100% completed. Do all this stuff, get a nice picture, uh, do the video introduction, put in all this stuff, and get to the 100% completed. That should be your first goal. So good luck with your portfolio. Paste one in the comments if you want us to review it, and I'll take a look at it, let you know if I think it's good. I'd love to see what you make. See you in the next video where we'll start actually searching for and getting a first job and getting proposals underway.